All righty, let's get started tonight. So we've had several requests um, for us to cover the compensation plan and ranks a little bit, just so that people, basic knowledge, understand. Um, and there are still some people that are even in higher ranks that still don't really understand the depth of the compensation plan. So we're going to kind of go over that um, tonight. I'm going to start with ranks just because it's simple. And um, because this is going to be recorded or is being recorded, then you can send your people to it if you have new people that are trying to understand the compensation plan and the ranks. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to pull up my PowerPoint here really quick. Um, oh, wait. Hold on. Minimize, share. There's Jared. Hey. What's up? How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Still at work. <sighs> yeah, me too. I'm still at work too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> someday my background will look like your background. <laughs> <laughs> I think someday all of our backgrounds should look like the beach, personally. <laughs> I agree. Okay, let's see here. Um, okay, let me move all you people to the side so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so for those of you that know me, I super, super love dreaming big. It is like my favorite thing to do. Um, I think why, why, why not? You know, why not all of us have the beach in the background? <laughs> um, however, there's kind of a caveat in this business, and that, that is that we also kind of need to have a reality check when it comes to the ranks, because there are people who will say, oh, I want to be diamond by the end of the year, and they want to work five hours a week, um, you know, holding a class maybe once a month, and the reality of that is, is that unless they're like mega influencers who happen to enroll four rock star, rock star frontline builders, it's not going to happen. So... Well, I want you to dream big and I want you to shoot for the moon. I also want you to understand what it really takes to get to a rank. Um, and really, at the end of the day, it's all about enrollments. So that is the um, best paying um, money making or rain making activity in this whole business, right? Is teaching people about the oils and which I think is Hmm. What's the word I'm looking for? Here I go again. What's the word Christy's looking for? <laughs> um, I think that it, it's supposed to be that way, basically, I guess is what I'm trying to say is that when we impact people's lives and we can get oils into their homes, that's what we should get paid off of, right? Like we, we want to get paid off of something so worthwhile. So we are going to just buzz through the ranks, but first, like, let's talk about what PV is, is, is product value. Um, it can also sometimes be referred to as personal volume because it can be like your, your personal volume, but it's really supposed to be just like product value, but you can sometimes hear it both ways. OV is your organizational volume. That's you and everybody on your team. So in here and in the next one, PV and OV are really going to matter in what we're talking about. So your your PV plus your team's PV basically equals overall OV. Jared, what's up? Oh, I thought you were, I can't hear you. I thought you had said something. No, I'm good. Just listening. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Nope. It was me. Your screen lit up. So I was wondering if it was you. Okay. So. As far as ranks go, our beginning rank is obviously consultant. And that's just you by your lonesome most of the time. In order to get to manager, other people have to be enrolled underneath you. And manager is 500 OV, director is 1,000 OV. And these are just really basic beginning ranks. Um, it doesn't mean a whole lot necessarily as far as like payout and those types of things. Um, it matters a little bit as you bump up in your ranks then you bump up in which levels you get paid on in the unit level compensation plan which i'll cover in just a minute but just so you understand the basics 
They're more years. of just milestones in the beginning. Thank you. Exactly. Um, so then executive is 2000 OV, which is your whole team's volume. And the nice thing about all the ranks up through elite is that it's just a volume thing. You don't have to worry a whole lot about um, making sure that you've got structure perfect or any of that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, I want you to have good structure. So we teach good structure, but I'm just saying that it doesn't all have to be coming from um, you know, split legs or whatever. So executive, the average income for an executive is around $200 a month, and that could be coming from your fast starts. Um, it's mostly going to be coming from your fast starts because your unit levels aren't going to be very much at that point. Um, and it usually takes about three months for people to get to executive if you're working your business consistently. So that means that you're holding classes and getting consistent enrollments. So um, you can imagine if you had 100 P or 100, 20 people each doing 100 PV a month, that's what gives you 2000 in OV, which if you enrolled 20 people in three months, you're awesome. Um, 20 people in three months all doing 100 PV order every month is like mega awesome. <laughs> so you have to also, when I'm talking about that reality check, I'm talking about um, doTERRA's retention which is usually around 65%. And even if you go to 50%, that means that if you enrolled 20 people and at 50% retention, only half of those people are still going to be placing orders that long into the future. So that's why it's important that you continue enrolling people to continue filling that pipeline. So the next one is going to be elite. Elite's just 3000 OV. And I always tell people, if you can get to elite, then you know how to get to residential diamond because it, it is built on the same structure. Presidential Diamond is built on a ton of elites, and so is Diamond, and so is Platinum and Silver. So if you can get yourself to elite, and you know how to do that, you just need to teach three people how to do that, and then duplicate that system, and it gets you to the sky, to the moon. Um, so with, with Elite and Premier, so when you get to Premier, it breaks it down. You have to have two separate legs and they both need to be executive, which is only 4,000 OV. But as a Premier total, you have to have 5,000. So you can have 3,000 coming from one leg and 2,000 from another, or maybe you have a third leg started and you've got 2,000, 2,000, and 1,000. Um, that's just going to depend on your own structure. I recommend doing those three legs to aim for silver first so that you can start heading to the leadership ranks. Um, so average income is around 300 at an elite and around 800 at a premier. At that point, you should be getting your power of three, um, a little bit in unit levels, and then your fast starts, obviously. And um, for most people, it usually takes six months to get to premier. So silver is the first leadership rank. And basically it's just that you have three elite legs. So you have gotten yourself to elite and you help three people get to elite as well. And that makes you silver. The important thing to remember about um, these ranks is that they can't be stacked under one another. So you, they all have to be on their own leg. And whether you're using somebody on your front line or somebody maybe on a second level, you can only rank off of one of them. So that's something that is really important to remember as you're doing your placements is that it's just, so I have, for example, <laughs> one of my legs at the top used to be a gold and she quit. Um, she's still sitting in the position, but she's not building her business. Underneath her is a blue diamond and a gold. So I can't, unfortunately, use both of them to qualify off of. I can only use one of them. So it's important in that way to, um, to make sure that you're structuring well and to make sure that you're not just putting it all down one leg, that you're building them out. And this is also, we talked about this before, this is also what helps you do build your power of three, right? So we talked about that pretty in depth in a previous conversation. If you're building your three legs, you're also building your power of three out. So this is how you do both at the same time. So the average um, amount of time it takes to get to silver is usually 13 months. Um, of consistent work and 
on average, you're making about $1,300, um, maybe a little bit more depending on, um, on your structure, on um, how long you've been doing it, like how many levels deep you've got, how many people are on your team, that volume can always fluctuate. So for us, um, when we were silver first, when we were first silver, <laughs> We were not making $1,300 a month because our um, structure was really, really tight. And so we had just super minimal volume and it took a while for that unit level to catch up with the averages. Um, but we were, that's what we wanted. So we were good with that. Gold is three premieres, which means that you need to have six executives down underneath there. So your silver leaders turn into gold leaders. Um, and the thing about getting to this point is that to be a gold, up to silver, you can pretty much do it yourself if you really needed to or wanted to. You don't really need a whole lot of support getting yourself to silver, I don't feel like. Um, but getting to gold and beyond, it's really, really helpful to have people running the race with you and um, that you don't just have placeholders sitting on your front line, that there's actually people there that are enrolling. Otherwise, the average time it's going to take for you to get to your goals is going to be extended because you're going to be the only one filling your pipeline. It's nice to recruit people to come in and help you do that um, and start building their businesses as well. So uh, the average income of a gold is around 3000 That comes from your unilevels, your power of three, your fast starts, as well as your leadership bonus. Um, you're, you do make a leadership bonus, sorry, off of um, silver, and you can make an empowerment bonus at Premier and silver, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, it gets more substantial at gold, the leadership bonus does, so that's where part of your income should be coming from. But at this level, if you have, uh, if you're a gold, each of your premiers should be getting their 250 bonuses. They should have that structure for their people. If they, if they each have executives and they're doing the three leader rule, they should be getting their $50 bonuses. Um, the executives should be. So that means that you should be getting your $1,500 bonus at gold. So if you're getting your $1,500 bonus power three, and you're getting your um, $750 leadership bonus, that in and of itself is 2,250. And then the rest would come in from unit levels and fast starts. So that's a pretty substantial chunk of change when you get yourself to that point. That's why I try and teach people to get there as fast as they can, because it can help you get your um, power of three in place. So platinum is three silvers. So it's just what silver was. You just make sure that those people, if, like I said, if you can do elite, you see all those little elites down there? If you know how to get yourself to elite, then you can coach people on how to get themselves to elite. And then you've got a little army of elites happening down there. Um, and then you can see the, the average income on it and the average amount of time. And diamond is just four silver. So it's just one more silver beyond what a platinum is. And this, it says the average is 23 months. I don't know. I go back and forth because <laughs> I struggle with, I struggle with the averages. And, and here's, I'm telling you all of the averages so that you can set realistic goals based off of what your efforts are. Um, obviously, if you're going to put in more effort, you can get there a lot faster. Andrew and I were able to hit diamond in um, just, I think it was like 13 months. So it wasn't, a really lengthy amount of time. It wasn't two years, but we were working our tails off to get there, right? Um, it also says that the average income is 12,000. We started out, when we started out at Diamond, um, our average income was more like 8,000, just because a lot of your income at Diamond comes from your UNA levels because you have so many people on your team. But we didn't, again, we had that really tight structure because we had built from power of three and we didn't have a lot of wasted volume anywhere. Um, and so our, our check was a little bit less than that, but eventually it evens out and you're able to get it to that average and even beyond that. So 
okay, blue diamond and presidential diamond, this is really like kind of next level, but it's five golds to get to blue diamond and six platinums to get to presidential. But that's why I'm saying, if you remember how many platinums or how many elites there are to become a platinum, then your little army of elites is growing to be a pretty substantial army of elites. Um, so if you can just perfect the activities that it takes to get yourself to elite, then like I said, you can train your people to be elite. Um, and that just boosts up your rank. So you teach them what you know and you benefit from it. The thing about doing this and that sometimes people will get frustrated with is that in the beginning, you're not making very much money and you feel like you're putting in a ton of work, which you are if you're trying to really build this business. You are putting in a ton of work and you're not getting very much money. I remember one of our first checks showing up and it was like 15 bucks. I'm like, oh, yay. <laughs> um, so there is just a little bit of pad in the beginning, but I'm sure you guys have all heard the story about building pipeline and they'll the more you build it, um, the more water is going to be able to flow through it. And it's going to go from a trickle to a flow. And that's what we were trying to create is that residual long-term flow of income from your efforts. So at some point along the way, usually between silver and gold, depending on what your income goals are, you really see that kind of shift and your flow really kicks it up a little bit. Um, by then, you usually have a lot more people on your team that are inputting and helping to build the pipeline as well, teaching classes and getting enrollments. And so it's not you just doing all of the work yourself and you start to gain that momentum and you're able to really build it a whole lot faster. So that is the beauty of our business is that we have um, a really incredible opportunity to build this amazing residual income. And I know that in the beginning, people can get really frustrated if they're sitting at elite for a long time. And the only way to get yourself out of elite is to keep enrolling and keep sharing the business opportunity with people. And if you're not doing that, then that's why you're probably frustrated and sitting at the rank you're sitting at. So, um, okay. I am going to shift gears here. Well, while I'm shifting gears, does anybody have any questions about the ranks? If you do, you have to unmute yourself. Can, can you go over real quick, um, like as far as what you need to be as far as like who you enroll and sponsor and just the significance of that. So like um, for people below you that you're working with to help them get to where, you know, they want to be, um, just kind of how that works. I'm sorry, maybe that sounds like a dumb question, but it's one that I'm, I'm uh, struggling with. <clears> okay. <throat> so the, the pros and cons of being, of, of keeping enrollment and as far as structure, how that works. So like if somebody, so for example, if, if I enrolled somebody and placed them underneath someone on my front line, or do they have any incentive whatsoever to continue building underneath that person or do they want to build underneath their own, I guess, is my question. That's a great, great question, Aaron. And I'm actually glad that you asked. So let's go back and let's just pull this up really quick. There are two different ways to look at this. So if we're looking at, let's go to gold, for example. If, if I say, so in the beginning, my philosophy was if I help my people be successful, then they're more inclined to stick around. And they're more inclined to, to do their business, right? So in the beginning, um, I was enrolling a lot of people. And so I enrolled, say, my, my premier legs, right? Um, all of my gold's executive legs initially were all people that I had enrolled as well. Um, and I did... So I would hold enroller on those people until it was beneficial for me to change enroller. My philosophy at that time was that I would change enroller over to those people if it was going to benefit me. Um, I've learned through trial and error over the years that um, if one of your executives in this example of gold premier and executive, if one of those executives 
or people in that executive position is actually outworking the premier, I would not turn over and roller on that person. That's what happened. That's why I have somebody on my front line who held enroller on the blue diamond and the gold that I had enrolled. I had turned enroller over on them. Um, I didn't know at that time that like nobody coached me or mentored me on that. It was just something that I learned through the school of hard knocks. Luckily, she has turned enroller back over to me on both of those people. So, I mean, it was showed really just a huge amount of integrity on her part. Um, because she's no longer doing the business, but still I can only use one of those people to be able to rank off of. Um, so I, I don't mind turning over on roller as long as the person who is, who would be like the premier leg, for example, is working. And they, I also have um, created a contract with people that they have to sign if they are coming into a position, say I have a dummy leg in a premier position um, and somebody wants, somebody says, I'm going to do the business and, you know, I have all these contacts. I'm going to, you know, this is, these are my goals, blah, blah, blah. Um, if I put them in that premier spot, then I make them sign a contract that basically says that they will hold up to their end of the deal, what I expect from them, what they can expect from me. Um, as far as growth and support and mentoring and their enrollments and their attendance at um, corporate events, those types of things, right? So that they're not just sitting in a free spot collecting money off of my efforts and they're not doing anything. Um, so as far as you placing somebody on their front line, is it beneficial to them to place their own people underneath them it depends on if you are ever going to turn over a roller to them. So for example, right now, um, on one of our legs, one of our second level legs, there's three people that we've placed. One of them, she's kind of doing her own thing and um, kind of rocking and rolling. She's opening up a new salon and doing really well. The other two are dummy legs. And so I would have no problem turning over and roller on the two dummy legs if they were to get people into those spots that are theirs, then they can have those legs. And that's not a big deal to me. Um, if I still, I wouldn't, um, if they put one of their people in there, then obviously you would change over and roller. Um, but otherwise I wouldn't change and roller over to anybody unless it was beneficial to me and that I could see that the person that I'm giving enroller to has earned that gift because that's what it is. Um, if they haven't enrolled enough people of their own in order to create their own ranks on their own, then what you're giving to them is a gift. So I generally don't turn over enroller unless it's gonna benefit my rank. Um, I have done that once. I have turned over enroller to somebody for one of my builders. It wasn't beneficial to me, but it was beneficial to her and to the person underneath her. And um, these ladies were working really hard and I wanted it to be a gift for them. So there are circumstances where you would do that. In the beginning, initially, what I would recommend is trying to get your people to enroll their own placeholders so that you don't really have to be in a situation where you have to turn over enroller. And then you both can start placing volume under their placeholders until they find a builder that wants to do the business and is committed to that. And a placeholder, for those that don't understand what a placeholder is, it's like your grandma. It's like enrolling your grandma and sticking them in a spot, somebody that's not going to do the business. So it's just somebody who is okay with you placing orders on their account, who maybe wants to place their own small orders on their account. Um, I mean, even, even if they wanna place a full 100 PV order on their account, that's cool too. Um, just with the understanding that as soon as you find somebody to go into that spot, that they will move out so you can move somebody that's serious about building the business into it. And the nice thing about the situation now is that doTERRA has made it so that you can convert those people just to wholesale customers and they'll just move basically over, stay on the front line, um, but they won't be wellness advocates anymore. So that's what I would recommend, Erin is that you get your people to enroll their own placeholder legs if they don't have their own builders. And that way, that way it takes away the whole who holds enroller, do I have to turn it over? Are they gonna do what they're supposed to be doing? Like it takes that whole headache away 
Um, and then you can start placing volume underneath there of customers or even your own builders um, because it helps to build to build up their volume in the right places. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, I did have one more question. If you, let's yeah. say you have someone that you have placed, um, that you've built underneath that have builders that you hold and uh, and roller on, but they're sponsored, do they gain any kind of financial benefit from that? Yes. So let's switch over to the other PowerPoint. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. So this one is going to be the compensation plan. And let me back up just to make sure that I've covered everything that we need to in this one. We covered PV, OV, LRP is obviously your loyalty rewards orders. Um, your fast start commissions. Fast starts are what you make off of enrollments and your people's enrollments. Um, they are paid the week after you um, got your enrollment. So if you got an enrollment this Wednesday, you would get paid on it next Wednesday, essentially, is how those commissions are cut. Um, retail unilevel power of three leadership bonuses, all of that is paid. The check is cut on the 15th of the month following the month you earned it in. So all of the commissions that you earned in December will be paid out on January 15th. Um, that's usually when doTERRA runs. They say it can be anywhere between the 15th and the 20th. They usually run commissions on the 15th. And <clears throat> um, for bank deposits, they usually end up on the 16th. So if you haven't filled out a direct deposit, you should because it's 50 cents for them to do a direct deposit and it's like $5 for them to actually send you a check. So you can just Google doTERRA direct deposit form, fill it out, send it in, and it makes it way easier and it just gets put into your bank rather than waiting <clears throat> for a check to come in the mail. Okay, so there's five different ways that you can get paid from doTERRA through the compensation plan. Let's see if it's, so the, we are gonna just break it down. We're gonna go through these first three and then the other two in just a second. Um, your retail customers, this is like hauling buckets, people. This is not, <laughs> this is not how you wanna build your business. So don't, don't think that this, I don't even like talking about how you can make money off of retail customers um, because it's not something I wanna encourage people to do. This is you just hauling water up to the village to have water. You're not like building a pipeline with this. Um, okay, so your fast starts come from the people that you enroll and then anybody that they enroll and then those people that they enroll, anybody that they enroll. So you get paid fast starts on three levels. As you can see, it drops down based off of um, what level they are as far as enrollments go. And this is all based off of enrollership. So that's why I don't like turning over enrollership on people if they are rocking and rolling to somebody who isn't doing the business because then I'm walking away from that fast start bonus. So <clears throat> I get 20% on anybody that I enroll and say I enroll Susie and Susie starts enrolling a bunch of people, then I get 10% off of everybody that she enrolls and she gets 10% or 20%, I mean. And then say Susie enrolls Jane, I get 5% of anybody that Jane enrolls, um, and then it just bumps up the line, right? So then Susie gets 10%, Jane gets 20%. Um, so this fast start bonuses, they are a little bit of hauling buckets if you're the only one enrolling, but they can become a bit of that pipeline if your people are enrolling people. So that's one of the really nice things um, is that when you get people who are enrolling other people, then you get fast start bonuses off of them. And Aaron, that's one of the reasons why I don't like giving enroller of people I enroll over to other people until it benefits me, if till that benefit outweighs what holding that enroller um, brings for me. So the biggest thing, um, the, and the question that you're asking is if I enroll people and then I start placing people under them, just like sponsoring people underneath them. Do they benefit from that? And your power of three is one of the best ways that they are going to benefit from that is because when you, power of three has nothing to do with enrollership. It has everything to do with sponsorship levels. So it's me and three people on my front line, three people on their front line, three people on their front line. That is literally the structure of power of three. It has nothing to do with who holds enroller of who. Um, 
So I can hold enroller of the three people that are on my front line. And then I can hold the enroller of all of the people that are on their front line and they could still get a $50 bonus or a 250 bonus or even a $1,500 bonus. And they don't have to hold enroller on any of them. They can all be just sponsored underneath them as long as it is in the power of three structure. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. So with power of three, and this is what I'm talking about when we, when we build our ranks based on our power of three, and I'm going to reiterate this again for anybody who didn't catch the video before, $1,500 is a substantial amount of money. And the only time you're going to start making more than that based off of your rank is going to be at platinum. At platinum, your leadership bonus will be $1,500. So until then, it's really great for you to get your $1,500 bonus, your power three bonus in place because it's gonna bring you the most amount of money the fastest. And in the process of doing that, you're going to be building your rank to silver, to gold, to platinum. It sets you up for the same structure. It just pays you more money a little bit faster than if you were just trying to get rank and not caring about your power of three. Um, so like I said, you, you should be able to create your power of three $1,500 bonus at gold. Um, otherwise, you don't get that $1,500 in a big bonus like that until you get to platinum. Um, so, makes sense, right? That we do it, we try and do our, our power of three first because you get your money faster and you're building your rank at the same time. So, just to kind of overview what power of three is, it's you place at least 100 PV order, LRP order, and then three people on your front line do the same thing. The one thing that you need to remember here is that you have to have 600 OV total. That means you and all the people on your front line. So say you have you and you placed 125 PV order and all your people placed 125 PV order. That's going to get you to 500 OV total. Um, so that other 100 can come from... It can come from retail customers. It can come from um, other smaller orders, you know, as far as somebody placing maybe a 50 PV order or an 85 PV order, a 30 PV order. Just it, it doesn't have to be people that um, are even placing loyalty rewards order. It can be super random volume and it can change and fluctuate month to month on where that extra volume comes from. The only rules are that you have to have, you have to be placing a loyalty rewards order and three of your people have to be doing at least 100 PV loyalty reward orders. And then the rest of the volume can come from wherever as long as it's on your front line or from you. So to get the 250 bonus, for you to get the 250 bonus, each of your front line, three people need to get their $50 bonus. When they get their $50 bonuses, then you get your 250. So Aaron, that's another one of those places where this is gonna come in beneficial, right? So you can place people under your people, you help them get their $50 bonus, you get your 250 bonus. Um, and then your $1,500 bonus comes into play when your second level people are making their $250 bonuses. Um, sorry, your first level people are making 250, your second level people are making their 50. Um, that's where your 1500 comes in. So if you have three people on your front line that are all making their $250 bonus, then you make $1,500. That's a huge, huge jump between $250 and $1,500. That's amazing. That's, that's a lot of money. Um, so as quickly as you can help your people get their $250 bonus, one, it helps to pay or cover the cost of their orders and give them money, extra money. And it helps their people get $50, which pays for half of their order every month. So as soon as you can get, the sooner you can get your people their bonuses and help them get them their bonuses, the better off it is for everybody because nobody wants to walk away from a $250 bonus or you, know, you especially a $1,500 bonus. So it just kind of gets so everybody. One other nice thing about this is that you can duplicate this again. <clears throat> you can get another three people. So you're working on your six legs that allows you to work towards the presidential rank or any of the higher ranks, but you can duplicate that again. So you're making two $1,500 bonuses and 
and that <clears throat> you really won't see that extra three thousand dollars until you're above diamond so um, it it can be really huge because you can have you could stay at gold and still be getting two two fifteen hundred dollar bonuses if for some reason one of your legs didn't work all the way work you all the way up to platinum by that point so <clears throat> Yeah, it is. It's a really great bonus to qualify for. So <clears throat> that is that is literally how we built our business. I built our whole business based off of the structure of power of three. And once we had enough people to get to platinum, you know, then we added in another leg and then we got to diamond and we added in another leg and get to blue diamond. Um, so like what Andrew is saying, um, that second power of three is really beneficial. You can only qualify for that once you've completed your first 1500. Um, so you have to make sure you have your first 1500 earned in that month, not just ever before, but in that month. And then it'll, so then it becomes like a 1550 or a 1750 or your 3000 instead of just your 1500. So, okay. The other reason why sponsoring underneath your people is beneficial for them is because eventually they also get paid oh. levels um, off of the people that are under them. And it doesn't matter if they hold enroller or sponsor on these people, they get paid a certain percentage off of the orders as soon as they roll out of the fast start period. So fast starts are paid out for the first 60 days that that person has been enrolled. So in the first 60 days, any purchases that they make, you earn fast starts off of. After that 60 days, they roll into the unit level portion of the compensation plan. So if they're sitting on your front level, you get one or 2% off of them. It's not a huge chunk of change. So that's why in the beginning, it, it feels like peanuts that you're earning because you're really just a 2% here and a 3% there. Um, but as you fill in your team, then that will increase. And and I know that in the beginning, it probably is a little bit frustrating, but I'm going to tell you the benefit of the unilevel compensation plan and the way that doTERRA has it structured is different from other companies. Other, other companies, they'll pay you 7% on the person on your level one. That doesn't give you any incentive to sponsor your people under anybody else. So I love that aspect of our compensation plan. I benefit more by giving my people sponsorship than by hoarding them on my front line. Also, the other thing that I love about this compensation plan is that we get paid the most amount of money on the most people. So based off of only earning 2% on your front line, you don't want to keep a whole lot of people on your front line. So you're placing people that you enroll underneath your people, um, and then they're doing the same thing, they're doing the same thing. So if everybody's doing a little bit of that, then it creates that triangle, right? The, where you have more people on the bottom than you do at the top. And if you're getting paid 7% on a thousand people sitting on level seven, rather than 2% on a thousand people sitting on your front line, it's really beneficial. Um, and where other companies compensations plans come in and they pay 7% on the front line and 2% on the bottom, um, that's what they would be getting basically as 2% on a thousand people instead of the 7% that we get paid on, that, that, on those people. So doTERRA is super generous in their compensation plan and the way that they allow us to qualify for ranks and the way they open up new levels as we qualify for each new rank. So as you can see off of the unit levels, um, as you go from manager to director to executive, you get paid a little bit more on each of your levels. So level one, that's your front line. That's everybody that's sitting on your level one. Um, and this, again, this has nothing to do with enrollership. This is totally based off of sponsorship. It's based off of literally, are they on your front level or are they on your second level or are they on your third level? It doesn't matter who holds enroller on these people. Um, so the further you go down, obviously it's, it's silver, you get paid 7% on everybody that's on your level seven. And that's where when we talk about the average incomes at those leadership ranks, that's where it starts changing. Because as you get more and more people down in those um, further levels away from you, then that's where your income starts increasing. 
because you are getting paid a higher percentage on more and more and more people. And as your people are working their business and they're starting to enroll and so on and so forth, it just creates more and more and more people down there on that level seven. And so you are making way more money. As you rank advance, most people think that it's because you're getting your leadership bonuses, but really it's because your Unilevel is growing. Um, so like our Unilevel bonus far exceeds any leadership rank bonus we get. So that is where, um, again, your power of three comes into play too in that structure of helping your people and then them helping their people and them helping their people. Then if everybody's doing that, then by the time you get to your level seven, there's a lot of people down there. So <clears throat> the bulk of your income will come from your unit level. It doesn't come from your leadership bonuses. And I'm saying this because on the next slide, <laughs> we're going to talk about leadership bonuses and um, how much you can make at, at leadership bonuses. And initially, it's really awesome. But in the long run, your pipeline is created from this, from this slide right here. So don't overlook the Unilevel. It is the biggest blessing in this business. Okay. So the leadership pools are paid from Premier and up. And a couple of years ago, doTERRA added in Premier. Prior to that, it was only silver and above. Um, but they gave Premier's an empowerment pool bonus. Um, and essentially what that is, is they take 1% of doTERRA's profits and they split it up between all of the qualifying Premier's and silver's that month. In order to qualify for the empowerment bonus, you have to be the rank of premier, like you have to hit the rank that month, and you have to have enrolled one person that has at least 100 PV enrollment order to be able to qualify for that bonus. Um, and as a silver, you can still qualify for that bonus. The empowerment bonus, um, <laughs> last time I checked, it was around $150. If anybody's qualifying for it and wants to speak up, if my numbers are off, feel free. It's usually around 200. Ooh, it's 200 now? Even Except better. during BOGO months, it's usually a little bit less. Sure. But yeah. Sure. So the more people that get into the pool, the more people that hit Premier and Silver, then the more it's going to go down because it's being split amongst more people. But that's good. $200 is a really great bonus. Um, so once you get to Silver, though, you go from getting just the empowerment bonus to being able to get your leadership bonus as well. And the way they do this is they take 2% of doTERRA's profits and they split it amongst the silvers, the golds, and platinums. So they break it down into shares. So silvers get one share and golds get five shares and platinums get 10 shares. Essentially what a share back when I was qualifying for silver, um, was around $150 as well. So one share is $150. So when you get to gold, then it's $750. When you get to platinum, it's, it's $1,500. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying at gold, you can get your $1,500 power of three bonus before you even get to platinum where you can get the $1,500. So, I mean, imagine if you have your $1,500 power of three in place, and then you get to platinum and you get that $1,500 leadership bonus on top of that, that's $3,000 in your pocket. <clears throat> in addition, I mean, and as well as um, your power of three bonus and your unit levels and your fast starts that you're getting. So, sorry, I included my power, power of three in that. And um, so anyways, that's why you're making above $3,000 generally when you're at a platinum because it, two $1,500 chunks are coming from some of the, the bonuses. Then when you get to diamond, there are two different pools that you pull from, and that's the diamond performance pool, as well as just your blue diamond pool, your diamond pool, or your presidential pool. Um, and so they, for the diamond performance pool, they take 1% and split it amongst all the diamonds, and you get based off of what rank you are, you get one share, two shares, or three shares. Um, 
And then for the diamond pool, same thing like what Lori was saying, when, when you have BOGO months, the diamond pool drops a little bit. Um, the diamond pool still fluctuates a little bit, but um, it's the silver, gold, and platinum ranks, they're pretty steady at the 150, 750, and 1500. Um, on BOGO months, the diamond pools can fluctuate a little bit more just because of the amount of people that can come in and go out. But the diamond pools, um, I want to say, I don't even know. Andrew, I don't know if you stepped away for a second. They're at least 4,000, but I'm thinking that they are a little bit more than that. I haven't looked at how much our diamond perform or our diamond, yeah, our diamond performance or our diamond pool is. I think total combined it's four thousand, um, and then I think when you move up to blue diamond, it's like seven thousand or seven thousand more, so like eleven thousand. And when you move up into presidential, it's higher than that. So this is where a lot of people will assume that you're getting the bulk amount of money is from just hitting diamond. Well, yeah, obviously $4,000 is a really nice check. Um, but your UNA levels in the long run will far exceed what you can make in the diamond pool. So that's, again, why we talk about structure and all that kind of stuff, because we want you to get, be getting your UNA levels. And I also want to set the realistic expectation that if you get to diamond really quickly, that you know, it says that the average diamond is like twelve to sixteen thousand dollars, and like I said, ours was eight thousand because our structure was really, really tight, and our volume wasn't as high as the average diamond volume. So our we weren't making as much off of our unit levels, even though we were getting. So we were getting, um, let's say four thousand from the diamond. We were getting fifteen hundred from our bonus, and our check was about eight thousand. So another what $2,500 we were getting in unit levels um, eventually that surpassed okay that is the end of my powerpoints now I want to open it up to you guys if you have questions to be able to talk about them and answer any of those questions that you have does it make sense to build power of three Yes. Okay. I want to make sure that everybody understands that. Is it a difficult process to sign over enroller to someone? No, no, it's super, super simple. It's just a DocuSign. Awesome. Have you guys ever had any issues with a placeholder resisting giving up their position? No. Okay, what happens if they're in a position where they're making rank and they're making money from it? Um, is that, does so, that you or does that, is that a challenge when? My hope is that a placeholder is really temporary and that mm -hmm. this isn't somebody that's going to stick around long enough to make any kind of substantial income. Um, so we have two placeholders right now on the, the example I was giving earlier. Um, and for now I place orders on their accounts when it helps me get my second $1,500 bonus, but I wouldn't otherwise. And if we were placing orders underneath them, I don't mind them collecting a $50 bonus or whatever, but I'm hoping that before it were to get to 250 or before it were to get to a substantial rank that those people would be replaced so that that money issue doesn't even it can't even become an issue and you have to do obviously people that you trust that's why i'm talking about your grandma right like people that you can put in that spot that you know are not going to screw you so i mean i'm using like my niece um, which she potentially actually could do the business and that's fine. And if she wants to, let's do it. Um, at that point, turning over enroller cause she's a placeholder right now. If I were to turn over enroller to her, then that means that the person that I was turning over enroller to better be rocking and rolling. 
um, if I'm going to give up somebody that I hold a roller on. And the other person's my brother-in-law and he's never going to do this business. So it's just not even a, an issue for him. So I've never had anybody be resistant in getting out of their spot. If that was the conversation that we had had in the beginning was that they were just a placeholder and that they knew what it was, they understood it, and they knew that at some point they were gonna be replaced. So Christy, I have one question. So the, uh, a, somebody that's just a placement, so you can, or a placeholder, you can buy, you buy, you basically manage the account, mm -hmm. but the only involvement really that they have in that is that they get a check occasionally from Maybe. That. They might. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of times though, those checks are going to be so small that it's just going to go into their AR balance, um, which is their, their accounts receivable. So they're never even really going to see a check in the mail unless it's like their $50 power of three. Okay. Um, and I mean, even now we have people that we place orders on their accounts that can qualify for their $50 bonus and they, they don't care. Like, you know, it's, it's a yay, <laughs> but they already know that they're outputting on, on a lot of times those people are placing their own orders. And so it's like helpful to cover part of their order, but they're still outputting money um, to qualify okay. for that anyways. So the other question that I have is, uh, so really the, most of the emphasis is on the enrollership. So what significance is there to being the sponsor? Where does that come into play in any of this, really? To holding sponsorship of somebody. Mm -hmm. It benefits in your power of three because your whole power of three structure is built off of sponsorship, not enrollership. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I understand that. And the unit levels are all built off of sponsorship, not enrollership. Okay. All so right. enrollership, enrollership matters for rank and it matters for your power of three, or not your power of three, your fast starts, your rank. And your fast starts. Is okay. really, is, I didn't make that distinction between the two as we were talking through that. Got it. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it seems like enrollership wouldn't be that big of a deal <laughs> until you have a blue diamond sitting underneath an elite. Then there's a problem, and you want to be holding enroller on the blue diamond. So not yeah. having elite hold enroller on that person. So that's why I'm just. I'm hesitant in turning over enroller and why I encourage people to do placeholders. Okay. All hey. right, that helps. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have a question? Nope. Okay. Any things that you would like to have covered next week? You can type them in, you can unmute yourself. Maybe you've already talked about this in a call that I missed, but any tips or anything for successfully launching new builders so that they can, I, don't know, I think you know what I'm saying, but just see those successes and kind of get excited and build momentum. Um, yeah. That's great. Anybody else? I second that, Christy. That was going to be my thing, too, is get new builders started. Okay. That's a great one. We all want to launch new builders, right? Okay. Taylor is thirding that. Perfect. Okay. Well, if we don't have anything else, I will um, talk with Andrew about that for next week. And remember that you are welcome to invite your people to our calls. I am putting all of these up on our YouTube, which is Inspiring Wellness on YouTube, um, and they can catch all the recordings. So anybody, Crystal, the um, recordings are gonna be up on Inspiring Wellness. Um, on awesome. YouTube. Okay, if you, don't, if you can't find it, or if you're not following it already, or subscribed to the channel already, just send me a text and I'll send you the link to that channel. Perfect. Do okay. Need a, yeah. Do we need a password or anything, Christy, or is it open? Oh, I'm just opening them up. Okay. So anybody can watch them. The only one that's not available is the one that we did on um, the back office, just because it had people's private information in there, and I haven't got around to editing it yet. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you, awesome. Christy.
Welcome. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Love spending time with you guys every Monday. So we'll see you again next Monday. Thanks, Christy. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.